Hi, I am Jomar and I'm going to discuss today uh, mathematical epidemiology, specifically related to COVID-19. So what I'm going to talk about um, is about the different metrics that we can compute um, to monitor COVID-19 uh, epidemics, let's say in, in our country, Philippines. So um, to start, may I um, share my screen? Um, while I'm sharing my screen, um, I also want to, to tell you that uh, you can um, uh, ask questions, you can um, raise your hand so that I can see if uh, you have uh, questions. Uh, we are using Zoom, so if you are familiar, there's a, a raise hand button so you can ask me questions. So what I'm going to discuss today is more on the metrics, as I uh, said earlier. So um, to discuss this, what we're going to do is to um, put the storyline of the whole um, uh, epidemics of COVID-19 using the epidemic curve, okay? And in an epidemic curve, usually if, uh, it doesn't start uh, immediately in, in an outbreak, okay, the epidemics. Usually there's an outbreak initiation phase where people, uh, usually um, imported cases, are being uh, imported to a certain place and those people might or might not um, start the outbreak. So that's the outbreak initiation phase and what we can compute there is the local outbreak threshold. So for now, for today, I'm just going to um, tell you the different metrics and we're going to have a separate lecture on how to compute these metrics, okay? So this is uh, mostly an introductory part of the, uh, uh, the, of the course in uh, mathematical epidemiology, uh, specifically for COVID-19. And also with this, we can also have a metric on the mobility of people and population density, okay? Mobility because we know pe when people are mobile, there could be many imported cases and those imported cases can really start the outbreak if the, the, the density of people in a certain place is very dense. Okay. And uh, we can also um, measure the uh, spatial temporal clustering of cases. So there are many uh, cases in one place. So that could be uh, set an alarm. Okay, so the next part is um, if we're not able to control the or um, contain the, the start of the outbreak, then we, we will enter an exponential phase. Remember, what I'm saying this is exponential because this is not a linear increase, okay? It's faster exponential, okay? And there could be many metrics like the doubling time, the time or the number of days, the number of cases might double, okay? So this... Uh, gives us the speed of the, the exponential phase and also what we call as the time varying reproduction number, okay? So reproduction number is a metric used in epidemics to um, somehow measure the contagiousness of the disease in a certain setting. And this uh, um, uh, measures the average number of uh, secondary cases that, uh, that can be directly infected by a primary case. So let's say if, uh, I can, if, if the reproduction number is two, a certain person can infect that on the average two people and those two people can on the average infect uh, other two people. So there will be like an exponential increase. And um, if we can also have uh, a metric on public information awareness, that would be also good. And uh, uh, based on the paper of Thomas Cuello, I can also share the, the link to you later after this uh, lecture. Um, or in, in, in more layman, uh, uh, layman's term, it's the buying time phase where we suppress the, the very fast increase of cases. So our um, healthcare capacity can, uh, can uh, give optimal care to the, to the cases and it won't really uh, go up. The number of cases will not go up above the healthcare capacity. So we have metrics there that case fatality rate, the occupancy rate or utilization rate of our local healthcare. So those are the things that um, are very important to know, okay? And then after that, if we are already ready, our healthcare capacity is already ready to provide optimal care, we can somehow have a phased reopening of our economy. So we can also have uh, different metrics here, like uh, the testing positivity rate, 
um, to, to know how many people uh, or the percentage of people tested that will be uh, positive and the contact tracing effectiveness and efficiency, the turnaround time. And I think one also the most important here is the number of active cases and the trend also of the active cases. Okay, so to also for us also to, to see the trend in the recoveries. And we call this one as the dance, okay, the re reopening of the, the economy, the dance phase, or the new normal phase. Okay, and at the end of the epidemic curve, if we are um, somehow lucky enough to have a vaccine, and we can have a uh, vaccine-driven um, uh, herd immunity, okay? So all in all, to summarize everything, there could be many, many metrics as you can see here in the screen. And if you want to remember the different metrics, you can follow the storyline in epidemic curve. And with this, we hope that we can learn many things about these metrics for us to have a future-ready policies, future-ready infrastructure and systems, okay? So, um, Thank you very much, uh, students, in, uh, uh, in uh, attending this uh, course. And uh, in the next lectures, we're going to have a more uh, deep and more um, uh, wide discussions on these metrics. Okay. So again, thank you very much. And I hope uh, you're able to, to understand what I have uh, discussed. Thank you.